Here comes LC. Uh, <laughs> here comes Salud and Velarde. Let's go right now to Jesus Salud making his entrance inside of the ring here. And Max, there's been a lot of talk coming into this fight with Jesus Salud after coming off the defeat to Barrera that this could very well be, if he loses tonight, his last fight inside the ring as a professional for Jesus Salud. Salud is a, uh, you know, we mentioned crossroads at the top. A crossroads fight is really best when they meet at the same place. In other words, Velardez is a guy who has not yet shown that he's as good as Salud was at his best. But Salud's a guy very well may not be at his best anymore. His loss against Marco Antonio Barrera suddenly doesn't look so bad because Barrera was so dominant in beating Nassim Ahmed. Barrera now looks like the best featherweight since Salvador Sanchez, at least since Suzuma Nelson. And so to lose badly to the most dominant guy in your division in 15 years isn't as bad as it looked maybe at the time before we knew how good Barrera was. All right, we've seen one Hawaiian punch here this evening. Coming up, the original one. Velarde Salud is just moments away. Stay tuned for the first spell. There's always something good going down at Mr. Sub, including this year's It's in the Bag contest. Buy any sub or wrap with any Coca-Cola product and get free snack size respites and your chance to win great prizes like a 2001 Ford Focus ZX3. One of 10 cruise holidays on Carnival Cruise Lines where you'll enjoy superb dining, lavish entertainment, and exciting destinations. Or millions worth of Mr. Sub super food values at Mr. Sub winnings in the bag. There's always something good going down at Mr. Sub. Oh, yeah. Our main event tonight, a classic case of experience versus youth. Jesus Salud has been fighting professionally for almost 18 years. He is still on the lookout for a belt. His opponent, Fernando Velardez, has been fighting professionally for two years, and he is still in high school. For that, let's go to Max and Mario. All right, thank you very much, Cassandra. And Fernando Velardez says that he's coming here, in here tonight to retire. Jesus Salud, a difficult task considering that number one, Salud has never lost in Hawaii. And number two, it's not going to be a cakewalk here. No, you know, Salud is on a bit of a roll himself. Velardez has won a bunch of his recent fights, but so if you take away the Barrera fight, so is Salud. You can see the age, 38 years old, but he's got the physiques and uh, the physique and the looks of a guy who's about. 32, 31 years old. Now, a lot of points we want to bring out, Max. Let's focus on them right now. Jesus Salud got beat up by Marco Antonio Barrera, but as I said, not the end of the world because so did Nassim Hamed. Velardez has really been on the upswing recently, lost some early fights, but he's only 20 years old, has a tendency to, to be out in front of himself, to reach for his opponent. And this as Teddy Atlas has pointed out many times on Friday Night Fights, you reach for the guy, your upper body falls over your front leg, and you're kind of falling into the guy you can be countered. I expect Salud to take advantage of that tonight. And round one between Salud and Velardez. Keep in mind that Velardez in the back black trunks was only two years old when Salud fought his first professional fight. One, two, Bobby. Velardez is Over reaching much less now than he did even six or seven one, fights two, three, ago. One, two, three. Improved, which is why this is now a crossroads fight instead of a cakewalk for Salud. Well, the reason why Velardez is in this position tonight is because he scored a very impressive victory just over a month ago in Las Vegas on the undercard of Barrera and Hamed when he just worked over Juan Carlos Ramirez, the Ranchero. Tonight he said he's going to come in here and surprise Hawaiians by knocking off their original Hawaiian punch. This is giving ground right away. What do you learn from that? One, two, three, Bring it down, let me go. is going after him a bit, and Salud is uh, looking to study him in the first round before committing. There you go. You had a body in the hook. All night, Bobby. One, two, Bobby. One, two. Bobby, you had a punch, Bobby. Expect Salud's defense. One, two, Bobby, look. Over the first few rounds to have Velarde's reaching, and Salud to take advantage of that as the fight wears on. So far, that hasn't happened. Right the middle, Bobby. Right the middle. Roman, Roman, Roman. 
Bobby Boy coming out with a nice style tonight, Max. And this is a fighter. He's 17-4-1, but he's still growing. And he suffered those losses early on. And now he's put together a nice string. Henry Armstrong lost his first professional fight, wound up being maybe the greatest fighter in the history of boxing other than Sugar Ray Robinson. I don't think that's in Velarde's future, but what's in his past, the early losses shouldn't be that big a deal. Freddie Pendleton was like a 500 fighter when, when he became a dominant force in that way. Or at least a world class Side to side. Bounce, Bobby. Billy Kahn used to say, the great okay, okay. Pittsburgh big, big uh, shot, Bob, used to say, if you were undefeated by the time you fought for a title, there was something wrong. It meant you never learned anything along the way. The early career losses, overrated. Again, salute in trouble here in the corner for a little bit. It's just surprising that he's able to kind of overwhelm him a little bit just with these looping overhand rights and salute's not answering. You know, salute takes great pride, you were saying earlier, that he's never lost you at home in a while. And also, it's a nice right hand. And also, he's 35 and 2 against Mexican fighters. Guys, keep in mind, he's had 72 fights. One of those fights was one of the most heartbreaking of his career. And that was the one that never happened. Let me explain. You see, in 1989, he won the WBA Junior Featherweight title against Juan Estrada. Took the title from him after Estrada was disqualified for low blows. And then he was stripped before he even had a chance to make his first title defense. And the reason, Max, was because he refused to travel to Colombia for mandatory defense on advice of the U.S. State Department. Here's what he had to say about that period in his life. I started from the very bottom. I mean, I climbed my way up there and earned that title. And then taking away like that, it's like, and only that, I was signing a big contract with HBO, and then, and when he took that title away, millions of dollars went down the drain with it, so, it, it really broke my heart. You hear him say how uh, he had a big contract lined up with HBO, who uh, Lou DiBella, who's three, Bobby. essentially the promoter here tonight, although he call himself the matchmaker. The guy took shots at you. Right. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what he's mad about. Uh, he revolutionized things over there. HBO claims to not care about who has the title, not important to them. And I think that with Debella, that they, they really took strides in that direction, that the titles became less important. But clearly, at the time, the title was important. Because after Salute lost it without a loss, without a loss in the ring, the contract And Salute says he wants to get that title shot once again. At 22, against either Bob Adams or Willie Boreen or the Halo Ladwaba. Boy, he needs to get past Bobby Boy here tonight in order to earn that shot. He's not going to get a shot at Morales or Jaime because as badly as Barrera beat him, uh, they're going to have to beat him at least as badly or he'll be criticized. So I don't think Hamed or Morales would fight him. Good hook from Come back with a hook. Shut that hand up. tonight, Max. He's fighting. He's coming off the loss to Barrera. He seems to be affected by that loss here inside the ring here tonight. He's not the, the same fighter of years past, but can he still get that championship shot? Well, that's why he claims he's fighting here tonight. Some decent action going on right now. They didn't do shit but to you, Bobby. the truth Don't worry is, why it. is he fighting? Because he's a fighter. This is no one. This is what he knows how to do. A bad loss here tonight. Yes, maybe he retires. Maybe. Salud says that not a day goes by when he does not think about that defeat. Uh, or basically the loss of that title. He was basically defeated outside of the ring. Corrine especially is a, a vul very vulnerable guy at 122 pounds. And Salud will also be considered vulnerable, but he has a name. So coming off the win here, I'd say it wouldn't be out of the question that he could get a title shot at a guy like Corrine. And that's a winnable fight. Well, let's not fight off Velarde so quick here either. Because here's a guy who's... He's winning the fight. He's, 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 he's winning the fight, but he's also in the same type of position looking for that opportunity at a big payday or a shot at the title. And with the loss that Asim Ahmed had just a few months, or excuse me, just bounce, a month ago. Bounce, Bobby, bounce. Who knows? Who knows if he could be possibly in the cards here as a tune-up fight. I say he's losing the fight. It's a close competitive fight so far after two rounds. 
And, and Salute is blocking a lot of these right hands that may look on TV like they're landing. He is picking them off with his gloves. Big right there by Velarde's that he sees just like leans into. It looked like he snaked around the left arm of Salute. Out here at the convention center in Honolulu, Hawaii, hoping that the Hawaiian punch can somehow punch his way into victory here tonight. And Velarde's trying to come into his opponent's digs to pick up the win. Hands off the rope. Put your mouth. Okay, three, three punches at a time, Bobby. You're not doing it. Just stay uh, ahead of the game. You throw three punches at a time. Jab right. Take it out. Okay. Put your mouth. Okay. Let's go. Oh, that's the way you want to do it. Okay, look. Jab by jab. Jab by hook out and move. Jab by jab. Jab by hook out and move, okay? Does it does it hit hard? No. Okay, then don't worry about it. Don't get caught, okay? Think up what you're doing and forgive yourself. Huh? Right, I mean, who? No. Go on, go on there and touch. Catch your breath. Three punches at a time, Bobby. You heard Bobby Boy's point. He said, does he hit hard? And he said, no. He said, well, don't worry about it. I don't know about that. So Lou's not a bad puncher. And Tito Mendoza last week, starched Sanchez with one right hand. He's not a big puncher either, but it landed right on the chin. A decent puncher and the right hand right on the chin. You can go. Doesn't matter if he's a big puncher. His father, Armando, is in the corner. Number one. Right, number one voice in the corner. But you, you see, Velarde, is, if he's carrying the fight on the judges' scorecards, doing so on volume punching. He's barely landed any more, but has thrown so many more that he's landed some more. He's definitely the more active fighter here this evening. So it doesn't matter if you throw 100 punches and 90 are blocked, you still landed 10. And depending on the angle, it looks like you might have landed more than just 10. And especially if there's not a lot coming back at you. The other guy throws five, lands three. His percentage is a lot higher, but he landed fewer punches. He's losing the fight. Bobby Boy not showing to lose any respect here this evening. He's, since round one, he's been on top of the match. Chin down, hands up, Bobby. He's taking a Met him with your right hand. Hands up, chin down, Bobby. Saloon's starting to come on a little bit. Felt him out for two rounds, and he's starting to push him back. You expect a 38-year-old to, to take his time, study the guy, and, and try and figure things out as the fight goes on, and the younger guy to maybe be a little more headstrong and come out and try to overwhelm him a little bit. Impose his strength a little bit in his youth. One, two, three, Bobby, move. One, two, three, up, up, up the middle. Keep bringing it up, Bobby. Bring it up the middle. Bring it up. Up and up. Overhand right. Max, we've seen Bobby Boy in the past. We see him here tonight. His father's his trainer. But we see where he's at, and he's got some talent. What could he possibly do in terms of growth if we were to bring in a different trainer for him? You if, know, you're, if you're, I, let's say, his management team thinking that. No, he looks a lot better than he did even six or seven fights ago. As I said, he's reaching much less. He's, um... His punches are coming in straighter. He's not making some of the same mistakes that he made even a year ago. And uh, so he is progressing. There's no doubt about it. He's only 20 years old. Most important thing in the corner, I think, is that you make sure you come in the fight in shape, prepared. Well, he's at the point in his life where he's going to show the most growth as a professional at this stage of his career. I, I should say prepared, and they can make adjustments in the corner and they can communicate with a fighter in the corner. And if his father's been with him from the beginning and they have a good relationship, there's no reason it can't work, as it's worked with Jack Mosley and, and Don Felix, one of that senior. Jesus Salud has never lost a fight in Hawaii. But Max, change to he may be losing this one right now. It's early yet. But... Nice left. Yeah, that backs up Velardez. Yeah, he's in the fight because he's countering well with his single straight right hand. He's just in the left hook, but Velardez is punching in volume. Round four coming up.
top car manufacturers adhere to very strict principles when they choose tires for their cars. And you can too. Bridgestone Tires. Stick to your principles. And welcome back to Honolulu, Hawaii for the main event of Tuesday Night Fights for this Tuesday, presented by Miller High Life. And here are the total punches for Velardes and Salud. 27% for Salud in terms of accuracy for the last round. Again, it's, um, I always thought percentage is a little bit overrated. If one guy's moving his hand so much more that he's landing more punches, and ultimately that's what it's about. And the copy box stat there showed exactly that, Max, that Bobby Boy was definitely a lot more active inside the sports circle. Henry Armstrong used to throw so many punches, and he could miss three quarters of them. It didn't matter. Jeff Fennick, the same thing, volume punches. Some of those wars that Fennec had with Ruma Nelson. Yeah, that was already, I think, past Fennec's prime at 130. When you look at Fennec at 22, 26, I mean, he was a monster. Punching his face. What do you make out of Salute right now up to this point? How much did Barrera take out of him, Max? If he looks old. I mean, let, let's face it. There's some guys who take a lot out of fighters. Barrera's one of them. Morales doesn't look the same since Barrera. I felt won that fight. Most people felt won that fight, although didn't get the decision. Um, McKinney wasn't the same after that war with Barrera. He knocked out Junior Jones, but it was kind of a one-punch knockout situation in the fight he was losing. Jones ran out of gas. Junior Jones, even, after the rematch with Barrera that he won. And he also won the first fight. Jones Jr. wasn't the same after that Barrera fight. I mean, Barrera takes it out of guys. And at the age of 38, a beating like that could have a tremendous effect. Don't wait. Up and now starting to really back up Saru here. He's getting in, landing some shots to the body. But Bobby Boy immediately makes him pay for it. Keep in mind, the salute doesn't have the amount of rounds as he did back in December to try to get Millard is out. It's a 10 round fight, not 12. He's got to take care of business a little bit quicker. One, two, three. One, two, three, Bobby. Oh, Bobby. One punch at a time. I say that frequently throughout this uh, broadcast, but frequently fighters do that. They throw one punch at a time. Well, one, one Hawaiian fighter had his family here earlier, Brian Valoria. Same thing with Asusa Salou. They're sitting here at ringside. Trying to cheer on their family member, Tamiki. It didn't have to end like this. Armor all protectant. Armor all wash and wax. And introducing Armor All Wipes, a revolutionary new way to shine, protect, and maintain your car quickly and easily. It's not just shine, it's Armor All. And there is Diamond Head in the background, classical music in Hawaii. Perfect, since this is just such a classic place to do a fight on a Tuesday night. But next Tuesday night, we're going to be by the bay in San Francisco for a heavyweight action between Robert Davis and Terrence Lewis. Boxing on the piers, the sunsets over San Francisco Bay. It promised to be a great night with some great fights. But right now, we've got an interesting matchup here between Fernando Bobby Boy Velardez and Jesus Salud. Salud in the yellow and green trunks, Bobby Boy in the black side, and Bobby, white. Side to side I can't hit you if you're bouncing. Hands up, chin down. Move, Bobby. And after struggling through the first few rounds against Velarde's, in the fourth, we saw Salud come on and tag Velarde's with some good shots, mainly to the body, trying to work him down low, eliminate his wheels, and then he went up top. Big right there. 
a little bit of contact there. Salute by Bobby Boy. Two down low and two up high. Bobby Boy coming on strong in this round, Max, after Salute took the last one. Pilar is landing his shots. He had a couple combinations early on, and he's just been calling it up again here. Midway through the round, it's all him. He's been overwhelming salute since the beginning with the volume punching, and nothing's changed. Bring him up the middle, Bobby. Bring him up the middle. Right there, he's good. Bring it up. Big right there by Salute. Rocks, Bobby boy. And that's what Salute's been waiting for. He's been waiting to place his shots. At 38 years old, they now have the energy to match punch output but looking to place his shots. Warning there by the ref real quick, and Bobby Boy is definitely backpedaling now. He's running around this ring trying to get away from Salud's offensive attack. The placement of the shots is important, just like Tito Mendoza last week with Sanchez. Not a big puncher, but hit him just in the right spot on the chin where the neck can't act as a shock absorber. That's where you score your knockouts. Max, he hasn't landed the more punches, but the one he just landed a second ago was definitely the most effective, effective of the fight. different corners in terms of advice. Bobby Boy in some trouble there. They're just worried about the eye sit back, not giving him advice. And you see Salute's corner immediately on top of him. Yeah. And telling him and giving him some sound advice. So he's open for the right hand, left hook. Counters. And that's what we were talking about earlier with, a, with the difference of a trainer at this stage in his career. You know what? There you go. This is a power punch he's thrown and landed. Salute has thrown fewer. He's thrown fewer punches overall, but landed more power shots. Power shots mean anything but a jab. Across and uppercut, anything but a jab. Referee sending. This is the last time about ice. You want to be salute to the corner as well as Bobby Boy. Referee now telling Salute's corner, excuse me, Bobby Boy's corner, that they need to dry up the canvas. He's not going to tell him again about too much water on the canvas. Because it's dangerous to a fighter. A guy rolls into the corner, he can slip either one of them. Yeah. And who knows what can happen? The professional referee knows something wrong, got it taken care of. That's it. Uh, salute, I'll tell you the truth. It would seem like his fight is on the inside. And he hasn't had a lot of success on the outside. But I have seen him fights in Velardo's past. If you give him room and make him chase you a little bit, he'll reach for you. And when he reaches for you, he, his weight falls over his front foot, and he has to kind of fall into you. And a guy like Salud could counter Velarde's coming in doing real damage. 
They're trying the problem is, Velarde's has a nice long jab, and while Salute's trying to make him reach for him, Velarde doesn't necessarily have to because he can just keep tapping him with the jab. Right behind Tom, right at Tom's feet. I don't think Salud's ever had Velarde's ready to go, obviously, but I think he reached in and shook him up in a similar way to the way Veloria was shook up. I think Salud shook up uh, Bobby Boy two or three times this fight. Reached him just down with the, with the counter hook and earlier with a straight right hand. Outside hook, Bobby. And that's the story of the fight. Salud reaches him with the cleanest punch in that exchange, a good straight right hand. But Velarde's threw three or four punches and therefore, in the end, probably won the exchange. He's 38 years old and he's hanging strong with a 20-year-old kid. And he plays his age. When he sees Salud, started as professional. Marvin Hagler was a dominant champion in boxing. The movie Rocky III had just been released in the theaters. We're talking about 1983. And Ronald Reagan was in his first turn. I mean, think of everything. Think about everything that's happened since then in the sport. And keep in mind, the guy in front of him, Velarde's, was in diapers at the age of two. Yeah. So, talking about the time when Salvador Sanchez had just died tragically in that car crash. Sugar Ray Leonard had just retired for the first time in his rent a long time ago. Six rounds of boxing complete here in our main event. Round seven's on deck. In our house, everyone works together to keep things running smoothly, but no one works as hard as CLR self-cleaning bathroom and kitchen cleaner deodorizer. I use it to tidy up the bathroom before everyone is off for the day. It instantly removes soap scum and hard water stains. Then later, I use it on the tub and shower to get rid of a week's worth of mess. When the kids come home from school, they fix a snack, and no one knows the sticky mess they made. Tonight, Dad's making his famous family spaghetti sauce, <laughs> but no problem. Its powerful spray action tackles even the hardest stains and spills. It used to take three or four different products to clean the two messiest rooms in our house, but no more. Now just one CLR bathroom and kitchen cleaner deodorizer does it all. Is it any wonder? It's from CLR. At participating Canadian Tire, Home Hardware, Safeway, Co-op Store, Revy Home and Garden, Pro Hardware, Do-It Centers, True Value Hardware, and Zellers. So if Bobby Boy comes out on top, what does his future hold? Cassandra Henderson can fill us in. Mari, Bobby Boy Velardez is, he does not have a promoter. He is self-promoted. Reports say he started out at a very young age. He had quite a few losses, but now he's on an upswing, so tons of promoters are looking at him. And if he wins this fight tonight, he'll have quite a few options. Back to you, Mario. And one matchmaker here in Hawaii is looking at him very closely here tonight, Max. I don't know, I don't know what, um, the Bell is, uh, if the Bell is planning on doing anything with Bobby Boy. <laughs> And if he is planning what he could really do, I think Bobby Boy is a rising young contender who looks like he's on his way to outpointing an old war horse tonight. A war horse that says that he's going to pretty much take it into the stable if he loses this fight let's, let's and, he's, and if let's he's see. suffering a beating. And that's what he's doing here thus far. I wouldn't say he's taking a beating. It's a tough fight. He's very much in the fight. I don't think Salute honestly is in it for that last title shot. I think he's in it because this is no this is what he knows how to do. Mario, he's a fighter. And well, Salute is cut with a big cut, Max. Oh yeah, that's squirting blood. Right over the left eye. And there's blood now all over the, bad the body at it. of the Salute. The referee is now gonna take this to the doctor and see what's, it's right over the eye. It's the worst place he can have a cut right now. And, and it's spurting, it, 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 it hits something there. It's spurting blood. It's not just, it's not just flowing down the side of his face and into his eye, it's actually spurting out of his eye. Bobby! There you go, 
Uh, and good, good, luck clo good luck closing that cut in between rounds. And there's a lot of pressure, Max, because he's in Hawaii. That's not the kind of cut that's going to close that, that, a cut, that I don't think a cut man can close hey, in between rounds. Beautiful. But it's in Hawaii, and that doctor right now must have been feeling Where's the pressure on those ropes stop because, stop because of the fact that north. he Open might be ending the career of a Hawaiian legend. Right. I mean, Jesus has made it quite clear that if he loses tonight, he's going to get out of the school. Well, the doctor can't think about that. He has to think about the safety of the fighters. And right not now, clearly, clearly, clearly. right now, looking to salute, he's in there, not trying to make something happen. Oh, down he goes with a right. And you see, he couldn't see the right hand coming. No, because of the blood. He's trying to... Oh, the artist did the right he's thing. He's trying to survive inside that ring right now. That cut is taking its toll. Folks, this is a brutal business, a brutal sport. And as soon as you see a weakness in a fighter, if you can't see because of blood coming out of his right eye, you attack the right eye. You attack the weakness. And Salud knows it. This fight, this fight's going to be stopped in between rounds. He has rounds to protect that eye as much as possible. Max, you think it might be stopped in between right, rounds? It right could now. be stopped right now. Yeah, the, the, that, cut is, that cut is a very bad one. And there's not going to be any stopping it. It's in the worst possible spot to have but a see, cut. That, that's the kind of cut that's going to require stitches. It's spurting blood. It's not just that it's leaking a little bit. And it's in a terrible spot. And once again, the doctor sends him back out. And it's a bad cut. When this round started, Salud had nothing on his crotch. Now they are... Overhand right, Bobby. Overhand right. Right there, right there. Oh, it was James Tony Steve with us. But um, Tony was cut and uh, basically had a round to end it and, round. and ended it. Fourth round, right. Hagler was cut against Hearns. And supposedly had a round, although I hear conflicting things about that now. I remember watching the fight. Well, Richard Steele. A closed circuit, Palladium in New York City. But at the time, everyone thought, oh, he has one round to finish it. Hagler finished it. Richard Steele was the referee that night. He told me a few weeks ago the story behind that. He said that Hagler told him, you're not going to end this on a cut. You need to let me fight. And Richard just looks at him. And he just said, you need to finish this thing quick. If we're going to, else he's going to have to stop it. I'm going to stop it, he said. And basically, Hagner went out there and killed. They're going to need a miracle to stop this cut. I don't think, uh, I don't think any solution that a, that a cut man has is going to stop that thing. I think it's going to take a miracle. Well, the doctor's heading over there right now as we speak into the corner. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? And Vaseline's not going to stop it, that's no. for sure. He's good, he's good, he's good. I'd be surprised if he's allowed to go this round. You see, Bob, you got to go. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'll go. Huh? Yeah, it's the way I am. That's on our new gate. You got to let your punches go. No, wait. You got to let your punches go. Don't load up. Speed, speed. This guy is in front of you anyway. Nice and go. Don't get excited. Nice, please. It's like they're putting caulking on that eyelid there. Yeah, they gotta caulk it up. They don't caulk it up, they chalk it up, Mario. Yeah, and here's the knockdown, man, by Velarde. And Bobby Boy is gonna go right back out there for that eye. You know, and that and that knockdown was a result not only of Jesus not being able to see the right hand, but Velarde shooting for the right hand, missing, hitting him on the chin. And Velarde is attacking that eye immediately. Is he going to lose your order, Max? Once a fighter's in trouble and the other guy sees it, he's going to jump all over it. He should, anyway. And he brought up the pin. It was a nasty cut. Now, if this wasn't Hawaii, do you exactly. think you'd be, allowed to, you think you'd be allowed to come out with that... <laughs> totally plastered up on the left side of his face. Well, not only that, would he still be allowed to continue? That's a good point. You made it earlier, and I dismissed it, but I think you're right. That's it. Fight has been stopped. The referee has seen enough. His Sousa is stopped in Hawaii for the first time in his career. They figure if the blood's coming through the plaster, it's time to stop the fight. And Bobby Boy Velardez continues his string of victories and Jesus Salud is extremely upset with the early stoppage he made a, a face at the referee and the fans here are leaving their seats immediately not happy with the way this fight no, listen, was stopped listen they did everything possible to let Salud continue the cut was too bad it was immediately apparent that the cut was horrible but they did they bent over backwards to let him continue the referee made the right call Tried to let everyone leave here happy, at least let Salou continue, but it wasn't feasible.
Well, well, we'll, f we'll be back with the official decision from this one in just a moment. Stay tuned. TSN. Join Eric Vaughn for The Collectors. A TSN original, The Collectors gives you the chance to purchase unique sports merchandise and take part in a live internet memorabilia auction. Check out tsn.ca as often as you like. New collectibles appear weekly. Join Eric Vaughn for The Collectors. Live internet auction and store. Check it out monthly on TSN. And we are back in Honolulu, Hawaii, where the fight between Jesus Salud and Bobby Boy Velardez was just stopped moments ago. Here's the official decision from this bout. Ladies and gentlemen, with the referee stopping the fight 41 seconds into the eighth round, your winner this evening, Bobby Boy Velardez. Fernando Velardez, the winner tonight, also put your hands by way of an eighth-round TKO, and, and Jesus Luth stopped here, Max, in Hawaii for the first time. Is it it for his career? I doubt it. Let's see if it is. I doubt it. He's not going to be satisfied ending the fight, his career on a cut, even though he was losing the fight. Meanwhile, Bobby Boy's on a roll. You impressed with him? Um, yes, I'm impressed with his with his with his, his learning curve. You know, he's improving very quickly, fight to fight. All right. Well. Fernando Velardez in our main event tonight stops the Hawaiian punch in eight rounds. Next week, come with us to San Francisco as Tuesday Night Fights goes boxing by the bay. Of course, this has been his presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Along with Max Kellerman, Cassandra Henderson, I'm Mario Diaz. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Fitness America.